Hello everybody, this is Fred Lloyd. I'm the founder of QRZ.com and today we're going to talk about the QRZ online logbook and how you can get the most out of it. We're starting this time from the home page of QRZ and, the way, and after you've logged in, the way to get to your logbook is to simply click on your call sign in the top right and choose My Logbook. This is the logbook page. Okay, getting started, let's uh, go right to the meat of the matter. Let's log a, a contact. You start that by up in the top left box right here next to Add So type in the call sign of the station that you're talking to. In this case, we'll say it's XX2XX. That's a test call sign we have at QRZ. And we'll click on Add QSO. Add QSO comes up with this window. And this window, I'll scroll it down a bit here, shows us uh, the basics for this particular QSO. It says here, the first thing it tells me is that I've worked this guy before on 12 meters back in 2012. Now, uh, all I have to do is fill in this form and click on save. Well, all right, first of all, it's uh, picked out 20 meters for me, and that's because that was the last band I used. Let's say that today we contacted him on 15. I can either choose 15 like this, or I can just punch the button over here and choose 15 meters as a shortcut. Then I'll put in the frequency. Let's say we contact either one, uh, oh, 21.325, let's say. And uh, I think that's a single sideband, certainly. And we'll just click here on some signal reports. And the power output is set already. And uh, the other things we'll leave blank. Now, this is the information about the QSO. If I click on this tab, the next tab, it's information about the receiver. In case I want to change anything about his side of the conversation, I can do that. For instance, if he tells me during the course of the conversation that he's running a kilowatt, I might just click kilowatt here just to put it in the log. The next tab talks about what's going on on my side. In case it's a, uh, for example, crossband, it could be a different frequency. We could enter that here. And the rest of these inf is information is about me and where I'm located. We can change that other, in other places in the program. So going back to the main QSO tab, we're satisfied with this. So now we'll just come down here and click on the Save button. And as you can see now, it went back to the list. That's, and uh, it's right at the top of the list. There it is, XX2XX, and that's the QSO that I just entered in. Okay, well that's it. That's, easy. that's all you have to do to get QSOs entered into your logbook by hand when you're using the web interface. Next we'll spend a few moments looking at the web interface and what's going on here on the list screen. You'll see there's a lot of buttons and selections to make and uh, we're going to talk about those. First we have the control bar at the very top. Uh, these menu items include list. List brings you back to this page all the time. Uh, there's FAQ, or the Frequently Asked Questions, that'll take you to some help. Uh, you can ignore that red admin there. That only comes up for me, since I'm the boss here. And then there's the Settings page, where you can uh, set up particulars. Uh, it's sort of like options to set up your preferences for this program, and then Refresh, which refreshes this page. Looking down in the main uh, logbook bar, we'll see here there's the Add QSO button that we used a minute ago. And then this next box is where you select your logbook. In this system, you're allowed to manage several logbooks. For instance, if you have a, a separate logbook for your mobile operations or a separate logbook with another call sign, you can manage those in this system. And when you click on the dropdown, you, you can see which uh, other logbooks that you have access to. More about that later. Also, to the far right, you'll see this is the logbook number. This comes in uh, important at times when you want to, uh, uh, you need support or you want to talk about something relating to a particular book. That logbook number is the one you want to mention. That is unique for this particular book. Uh, the statistics for this book, it says here that there's 2,222 QSOs in this logbook. 384 of those have been confirmed in a, in for a total of 236 countries. This is all calculated for you automatically. On the next line, you have the uh, what we call the transport controls or the uh, uh, the pager and by clicking on this you can flip through different pages 
As you can see, I've got 149 pages of QSOs here, and every time I click on this button, it pulls up the next page. Uh, of course, this button's the previous page. This far left button takes us all the way back to the start, and the button on the far right takes us all the way to the end of the book. One of the things that you'll notice is that the book can be sorted uh, in the way it's displayed. And the most popular way is date, and this means new to old, meaning the newest dates are on top. Well, we just entered this QSO, and sure enough, it's the one on top. And if we go to the end of our logbook, we'll see here that the oldest QSO I had was in 1988. Uh, so if uh, we go back to the beginning here and we change the sort order, for instance, if I changed it from old to new, then the oldest QSO is the first one shown on the first page. So that's what that's all about. You can sort uh, by band, by call sign, frequency, mode, whatever you like. You can sort this, this book. Uh, the default, though, is from new to old, and that's what we'll keep it on for right now. Also, you'll see uh, a little box here for find. This is for finding QSO's uh, call signs for people that you've already worked. For instance, if you recall having worked uh, a station in Spain recently, and it was, uh, let's say I'm looking for EA5, uh, EB5, uh, let's say AJB. I'm cheating because I can see it right there, but anyway... If you, it will find these call signs, and there it says I worked him twice, and, and those are the particulars for him. So I'll just hit refresh here to go back and uh, clear it back to the way it was. So the find can be very useful. The next thing we're going to talk about are filters. Filters are a means by which you can select different, uh, uh, you can view your log using different categories. For example, let's say that I want to see only 20 meter contacts in this list. Well, if I click on filter options and I'll select a field here, and this time I'll say there band. And then it'll say, okay, which band? I'll say 20 meters. And if I add the rule, now this logbook is being displayed based on the rule that I just set up, the rule being that the band matches 20 meters. And if I click on the filter options button again, it'll it'll move out of the way so I can see. Now I only have 89 pages of, of QSOs, but again, these are all 20 meter QSOs, and they're sorted by band. Uh, you can, you can uh, add additional filter options. For example, if I turn the filter options back on and I select their country, let's say, and I'll choose a country here. Let's choose, uh, oh, let's go with Brazil and add rule. Now, this box here says that it's the band has to be 20 meters and the country has to be Brazil. Well, now we have that. Uh, looking over in the log, now we've got all the Brazilian contacts. There's only a total of, uh, of this one page right here. And so uh, it says one of one, and that's because there's only one page. Okay, so uh, again, uh, we're going to go back to all of the filter options. But in order to do that, we need to go back here and just remove these filters. That little red mark there removes the particular filter. We'll remove them both and now we're back to the all to the all display. Finally, at the end, we have rows. That's the number of rows that are shown in this list. And, and if, if depending on the size of your monitor, you might want to make it smaller or larger. I just set it to 10 there. You can you can even set it to five if you want to. Or if you set it to some larger number, like there's a hundred, uh, you can use the scroll bar and go down. It's nice too that the, the transport control down at the bottom for paging is also at the bottom as well as the top. So that, that's a good thing. Now we'll leave it at 15 for this uh, for our talk here since we can see the whole thing in the page. Next I'd like to talk about the all-important logbook settings page. For that you click on settings at this top logbook menu and what you get here are everything there is about this particular logbook. It tells you that uh, uh, information here in the, in the panel. And it, over here on the right side, it shows you uh, the authorized users. One of the things about our logbook is that you can authorize other hams to use this logbook and have access to it with limited privileges, which is nice in a club situation or field day or something like that where more than one person might be adding QSOs to the logbook. Uh, this button is the property screen. Uh, the property screen pulls up a page 
where we can make adjustments to the, all the defaults for our logbook. In other words, when we enter in a new QSO, uh, for example, what name do we want to have in the logbook? What, what's our QTH for today? Uh, you can change all these things here so that, uh, uh, so that they will be entered in on any new QSO that you have. Also, uh, there's a selection here for default logbook. This little check mark here is the logbook that gets shown on your call sign page back on the uh, call sign website. You can choose whether or not you want zeros displayed as slashes. That's, a, that's an option we have here. And uh, this is the list of users. If, if I had a, a, a buddy, let's say I want to let uh, my friend uh, 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 WS2L uh, use this logbook. Well, I just put his, uh, his call sign in here, and now he's an authorized user on this logbook. An authorized user can enter logs and what have you, but they can't add other users or they can't even use this page, but, but it's one of the things that, uh, that comes in real handy for multi-user. Uh, finally, up here on the right, there's delete this logbook. Uh, when you delete the logbook, it, it does in fact get rid of it and, and removes all the logs that are in the logbook. I don't suggest that you use that really unless you're really, really sure you know what you're doing. Don't delete your logbook. So finally, when you're done, you'll click on Save at the bottom. Again, this administrator-only setting, you can just ignore that because that is uh, something that only comes up for logbook administrators, such as myself. Now we're back on the Settings page again. Uh, we were at Properties for a moment. We're back on the Settings page. The only, only other thing I want to show you here is the Import-Export panel. This shows you, uh, this is, for instance, how you would export a logbook if you wanted to create a file that you wanted to submit to another logging organization, you would just choose export here and uh, it would create an ADIF compatible export file for you. It's a very handy uh, thing to have. Uh, if you're going to import a file from someone else, somewhere else, you would use this screen to import and uh, bring in uh, a logbook from somebody else. Again, it has to be ADIF compatible. Uh, also, whenever you bring in a logbook, it won't necessarily accept all the entries in it if, if, for example, they're duplicates or something like that. This particular form at the bottom shows us what we've done. Uh, what, uh, it's the history, basically, of the imports and exports. And here it shows that uh, the migration... Now, the migration is, the, is a unique type. That's when it's coming over from the old version to the new. But there's a report here associated with the migration. And if we click on View Report, it will show us uh, things that were skipped. Now, there, there were several of the records in my V1 that were skipped, and these were all because they were duplicates. And uh, they were duplicates for good reason, and that's because I uploaded the same file many, many times in testing. And uh, the old V1 log did not check for duplicates. It, it wasn't very good at that at all. And uh, so that's why mine had dozens and dozens of duplicates in it. But it's, whenever it does reject something, it's, it's doing it for a good reason. And that reason is it ma it's, it's too close to another QSO with the exact same information. Now we'll go back to the main menu. I'll just click on the List button at the top. And uh, that's about it for the introduction. We're going to continue this series with some more videos and uh, for some deeper dives into some of the things you can do. But I just, oh, well, let's stop right there. I forgot to mention for you there's two other features. Notice these check marks along the side. Whenever you make a check mark here, an action button will pop up at the bottom. That means that you can perform an action on one or more of the checked QSOs in this, in this list. When, when you click on actions, you get a pop-up. You can do one of two things. You can delete those records, or you can request confirmation. Now, what request confirmation does is it sends a message to the other hand on the QRZ system telling them that they should come and log the contact as well, because when they do, then you'll both be confirmed. It doesn't enter the contact into their logbook. In fact, it creates a PM, a private message. And once you have private messages, up at the top of the screen, it'll say here, you've got two messages waiting. The other fellow will receive the message when you send them that. So uh, you should take note of that. The other feature we have is on the left. Uh, if you click on any of the numbers here, a little flag will pop up. 
And when those flags are just markers, and if I say save on that, then the next time I come to this logbook, those will be flagged. You can use those flags for whatever you want. They're just they're just place markers. That's all they're. They're like little bookmarks uh, to use for yourself. Anyway, uh, that's the last thing I wanted to show you. And uh, I thank you again for trying the logbook. And uh, we'll be coming out with another video real soon. Thanks a lot. And 73.